Hi there, and a very warm welcome to Season 5, Episode 55 of People Soup. It's Ross McIntosh here. Pea Supers, this week it's a cup of soup and a remix. I bring you a refreshed version of one of our most popular episodes from Season 4. I want to talk to you about perspective-taking and how that relates to the world between our ears. I'm recording this new intro in Granada, Spain, where I'm attending the European Academy of Occupational Health Psychology Conference. And yesterday, with some colleagues, we presented some research and a glimpse into the workplace delivery. Now, if you could just try on these perspectacles, please, and read the bottom line of the chart over there. For those of you who are new to People Soup, hi, hola, welcome to the community. For those who are more familiar, dedicated pea supers, welcome back. Thanks for joining us again. We're an award winning podcast where we share evidence based behavioural science in a way that's practical, accessible, and fun. Our mission is to unlock workplace potential with expert perspectives from contextual behavioural science. For now, get a brew on and have a listen to my reflections on perspectacles. So, pea supers, I'm going to have a go at exercising my creativity, experimenting with ways to illustrate my point. And my point is that we all live inside our heads, and often we can assume other people are in there with us, think like us, and really get us. In my work and life, I constantly marvel that workplaces can function, relationships can happen and be sustained, and agreements can be made. Because I reckon we can spend a lot of time assuming that people are thinking just like us. And what's going on in someone else's head can shape how they look at the world, experience the world, and how they show up in that same world. And that applies to us too. And this was brought to life by an experiment conducted by Elizabeth Newton in 1990. So let me explain the experiment. In pairs, people were allocated the role of tapper or listener. The tapper was invited to tap out the rhythm of a popular song from a list of 25, such as Happy Birthday or The Star Spangled Banner. The listener had to guess the song, just from the taps. So, Pea Supers, it would be remiss of me not to have a go at this with you. So let's have a go and try and bring that experiment to life. So I'm going to tap out two songs. Can you identify them? And I'm going to tell you that in the People Soup version of this experiment, the song could be a Christmas carol, a nursery rhyme, or a well-known Beatles track. And I'm going to tap them out with two pencils. Okay, so here we go. Song one. Okay, so that was song one. And here we go with song two. So how did you get on? Because in the next part of the experiment, before the listener guessed, the tapper was also asked how many people would get it right, and they thought about 50%. Now in reality, how many of the listeners actually got the song right? Well, it was actually 2.5%, dramatically different from the result that the tapper predicted. So how did you get on, P Supers? Did anyone manage to identify song one or song two? Before I reveal what I was tapping, let's just think about what was going on there, the different roles of the tapper and the listener. The difference is, when I was tapping out those songs for you, I was singing the song in my head. But you weren't in there with me, were you? So, let's reveal. The first song was... Bobby Shafto's gone to see Silver buckles on his knee He'll come back and marry me Bonnie Bobby Shafto And that's Bobby Shafto... A nursery rhyme that's probably quite particular to the northeast of England. And song two, wonder if anyone got this. The holly and the ivy, when they are both full grown, of all the trees that are in the wood, the holly bears the crown. Right, so how did you get on, pea supers? When we talk to our partners, our friends, our children, our work colleagues, they don't have the context that's going on in our heads. They're not experiencing the inner world that we're experiencing, which could well be based on a whole range of factors and experiences we've had in our lives. And indeed, it depends which nursery rhymes they grew up with, 
as I said, mine was quite specific, I think, to the northeast of England, and whether they're familiar with Christmas carols or the Beatles. At work, other people don't know the soundtrack that's playing in our heads. They don't know our work songs. So, now I've got an exercise from one of our recent guests, Diana Hill. I think this exercise can help us expand our perspective and imagine we're playing with a pair of perspectacles. So, For example, with perspective taking, I might have people take their hands and make them into two O's. And you could do this now with me. Take your hands and put them into two O's. Mm -hmm. And then you put the O's right over your eyes like you're wearing goggles. And these goggles are, are often our self stories, our beliefs about who we are and who other people are. And if you look around, you kind of move your head from side to side, you can see how your periphery vision is really limited and your view is really limited, right? So with perspective taking, we do, there's two steps to it. The first is moving our hands away from our face and taking a look at our hands and seeing that we have a little bit more room, like, okay, this is a story and I can start to identify, maybe my right hand is the I'm not good enough story and my left hand is the I'm better than you story and we can hold both. <laughs> yeah. We're so, such, so interesting. I can believe that I'm not good enough and at the same time believe that I'm better than, right? So we can have these self stories that are limiting and then the first step is just noticing that, like, wow, okay, I can take perspective on this as a story. And then the second step is I want you to take those hands and keeping your focus forward, slowly separate your hands and move your hands to the side as if you're slowly peeling away and opening and notice your brain's tendency to want to choose a hand to focus on, but just keep your attention forward as if you're expanding and opening your awareness all the way to a more panoramic view so that your hands come all the way to the side and you can see in the corners of your eyes, your hands, but really you're focusing your mind forward. And then you can even drop your hands and keep that spacious panoramic view so that now you have a fuller perspective on you, on your story, but also one that is interconnected and that's really a 360 perspective because you can feel it expands all the way behind your back and all the way around the room. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's the power of something that's so simple, like perspective taking. Now, that's hard to write in a book. <laughs> So I don't always do exercises like that. But but then once you've, once you've felt that in a workshop with you, Ross, and I'm sure you have really cool stuff that you do with people, once you felt it in the workshop and then you go home and you have the book, you can start to say, okay, yeah, that's what perspective taking is. It's that, that's that expansive awareness where I'm, I'm interconnected and bigger than the small me that I get caught up in. And oh yeah, here I am, goggles on. I'm only seeing, you know, you, you, you're in a fight with your partner, with a friend, with your mom, with your dad, with your kid, you know what you're doing? Goggles on, <laughs> you know? And so you can feel that feeling of, well, this is when my goggles are on that I'm caught up in a self story. And now I also know the feeling of what it's like to be not caught up in the self story. Even though the self story is there, I didn't cut your hands off. I didn't strap them behind your back. I just gave you a little bit more room to take perspective on yourself and your life. And then with that room and that openness, we have more flexibility to move about the world. We see with a little bit more clarity and we move more freely, which is really what psychological flexibility is all about. I love that exercise from Diana, who talks about our self stories and beliefs, those beliefs about who we are and those beliefs about who other people are. In the workplace, this is like our soundtrack, our work song that's constantly playing and influencing how we show up. And other people can't hear our work song. And sometimes we don't appreciate that. And that's when things might go awry. Pea Supers, that's it, in the bag. The perspectacles are now back in their case until you next need them. Thanks to Diana for her wisdom and goggles. And you can hear the full episode with Diana via the links in the show notes. I'd really like your help in reaching more people with this behavioral science. So, if you enjoyed this episode of the podcast, we'd love you to do three things. Number one, share it with one other person. Number two, subscribe and give us a five-star review, whatever platform you're on. And number three, share the heck out of it on the socials. This would all help us reach more people and make some noise with stuff that could be useful. We love to hear from you and you can get in touch at peoplesoup.pod at gmail.com. On X, formerly known as Twitter, we are at peoplesouppod. On the gram, known as Insta, we are at people.soup. And on Facebook, we are at peoplesouppod. You can also drop us a review or get in touch using a voice note on WhatsApp. Thanks to Andy Glenn for his spoon magic and Alex Engelberg for his vocals. 
Most of all, dear listener, thanks to you. Look after yourselves, peace supers, and bye for now. Bobby Shafto's gone to see Silver buckles on his knee He'll come back and marry me Bonnie Bobby Shafto